Bob Odenkirk, huge congratulations. You just won the Critics' Choice Award last week for Better Call Saul. Uh, what was it like getting up on that stage, accepting the trophy? Amazing. It was uh, stunning and surprising and uh, really fun. Uh, a big jolt of energy. Uh, of course, I was with uh, the creators of the show, Vince Gilligan and Peter Gould, and uh, Jonathan Banks was there. Uh, Ray Seahorn and Patrick Fabian, some of my cast mates. And, um, you know, it's our first year. Our show was, uh, I don't want to overstate it, but we were appropriately uh, nervous about even doing the show. And so, you know, and then how would it be accepted? And then, you know, just being nominated for an award is like really all more than we could ever have hoped for. And mm -hmm. um, so that was quite enough, really, just to be there for that. And, and, and so for us, it was gr a lot of joy in that group of people. To, it's just a great feeling of uh, approval from people uh, on something that you really weren't sure uh, people were going to even be able to allow themselves to like us and even if they did like i really i told michael mando who's one of the cast members we, we had a meeting well a dinner before we uh, started shooting and i said it's it's gonna take probably three years for people to to really watch the show and go okay forget breaking bad what is this show is it good do i like it do i not i mean just forget that it came from breaking bad what do i think of this thing in front of me and so I, I think that people did that right away almost. And part of that is a tribute to Vince Gilligan and Peter Gould. But um, I was surprised that people did it. And then that was just a verification, I think, winning that award that people liked what we did and somehow were able to uh, just watch it for what it was and appreciate it for what it was. Right. Um, you know, another great thing about that night, the Critics' Choice Night, is Jonathan Banks won as well. So you got you guys got to celebrate kind of together, didn't you? Yeah, absolutely. Of course, I think Banks, he's amazing in Better Call Saul. Uh, yeah. But I, ho I hope that part of the reason he won was because of his wonderful work on Breaking Bad and, and how rich he's made that character. Um, Although I will say in Better Call Saul, episode six, which is all Mike, it's just one of the best episodes of TV ever. So, um, yeah, that was good. And, you know, the Emmys are coming up next and our website, Gold Derby, we, we do a lot of predictions and, you know, awards predictions and things like that. And a lot of our a lot of our pundits think that you could get a nomination for drama actor. And you know, most of your career has been in the comedy field. So what's it like, you kind of made a joke at the Critics' Choice, but what's it like being known now as a dramatic actor? Uh, well, I, I, it's weird and, uh, and new and, uh, and yet, you know, I know what I've done. I mean, I know how I played uh, uh, Jimmy McGill, Saul Goodman. Um, and I know I didn't play him with irony and I didn't play him with any kind of uh, humor, the kind of distance or kind of uh, sort of self uh, caricaturization that you often do in comedy. Um, and of course I was in Fargo and Breaking Bad and um, Nebraska and a couple, you know, spectacular now. I, I've done, you know, I, I've done it for a couple of years now. I've played a, you know, this more direct kind of dramatic, dramatically based performance that's a little, that's more earnest and straightforward. And, um, but it is a little strange to get um, attention and appreciation for this completely different dimension of what I, from what I did, did for, for so many years. Mm -hmm. Having said that, you know, I probably always belonged, and I, I, I thought this many years ago, I probably always belonged in a dramatic context more than comedy. And I love comedy, and I did, David Cross and I recently did four half hours for Netflix uh, of sketch comedy. 
so I still love doing it. But in the end, I probably just belong in a dramatic context as a performer, just because uh, I have kind of a kind of an energy that's a little less uh, simple and kind of fun. It just isn't. Than, than, than comedy performers tend to have. And of course, I've worked with the best. So I've seen them up close. And you know, you smile when you see Chris Farley on stage, you smile when you see Will Ferrell, you smile when you see David Cross, you know, even if you don't like his politics, he makes you smile. Because his physical presence, there's something upbeat and kind of, it just makes you smile. And and I feel I feel like there's kind of a uh, a kind of a simplicity to their energy that works really great in comedy and makes you happy as an audience member. And I think I've always had a more complicated kind of what the fuck is that guy doing? What does he really want? Kind of energy that belongs in drama where you want people to look at your characters and wonder what exactly they really are at. Mm -hmm. You know, in, in your career, you've won two Emmys already, one of them for writing Saturday Night Live and then yeah. for writing The Ben Stiller Show. Um, what do you remember from those nights uh, going up on the stage? And uh, were, you, were you there as part of the groups that accepted uh -huh. the trophy? Yeah. I mean, I was – both of those were ridiculously exciting, and they were similar to the Critics' Choice win the other night. Um, I mean, I guess there's probably people who have a different experience of winning awards. I suppose Frazier or John Stewart, certainly. Uh, people who've won many, many times, the, 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 the experience probably changes for them. And I don't think I have to worry about that. But um, with Saturday Night Live, it was uh, my first year as a writer there, um, my first full year. And uh, we were a kind of a young contingent and uh, SNL had been getting its ass kicked for seven years at that point. And um, so it was a huge vote of confidence to us from the community uh, that we were doing strong material again. And, uh, and it was a surprise, a genuine surprise. And then of course the Ben Stiller show was a massive surprise because that show had already been canceled. Right. It was hardly viewed by anyone. Um, although I did think we could win because I know how voting with Emmys works, and I'm not sure it still works this way. But once you have the nominees, you have to watch an episode of each of those. Mm -hmm. And the Ben Stiller episode that we had put forth was really strong. I mean, beginning to end, it was really strong. And I thought, you know, you show that to anybody who cares about sketch comedy, they're going to pick that out as good writing. So, um, but still a big, big surprise. Um, yeah, so that's been my experience is like, it's really like a holy shit moment. I can't believe you just said our name. And mm -hmm. it's just means, uh, it means a lot. Now, again, the real question I think my experience is probably what a lot of people feel when they win. But the real question is, how does it feel for, you know, Mad Men to win a fourth time? Or how does it feel for Jon Stewart to win a 12th time? Mm -hmm. What is, does that mean anything to you? Or do you just go, oh, Jesus, I don't have that much shelf space in my house. I can't keep stacking these awards up. Uh, yeah. I wonder how that feels, but I guess I'll never find out and that's fine with me. <laughs> um, the Emmy voting is is the same like that as it was back then. Oh, yeah? uh, if, if you get nominated for you know Best Actor, you'll have to pick one episode and then the judges will all you know watch that and they have to sign something that says they watched it. And I think this year it's actually moving all online so that they're not gonna be sending DVDs or anything. Um, when I, I actually was in the Academy back then and mm -hmm. I went to the voting and what they did then was if you were a nominee, you had, there were two days. Do you remember this? I think it was two days or two weekends and you would go down for a day and you'd spend like four hours there. And if you were an actor, you'd be voting for writing. You wouldn't vote for your own um, category, whatever you did. Well, I was at the time I was a writer in comedy 
and I voted for the writing in the drama de uh, department. And so they made the group, so everybody who was voting for the final nominees was in a room watching all of them in a row. You didn't, you, they didn't even trust you to say you watched them. You had to come to a building and you had to stay there for four hours and watch them, which I think is pretty cool. And, and I remember voting for an episode of Homicide that was so well written. And it was a uh, it was an interrogation from beginning to end. They never left the room they were in for an hour. And uh, I thought that that's the best writing of the episodes of TV I watched, but it'll never win because it's so dry and it's so hard to love because it's just people talking in really unpleasant scenario, which, you know, it's a cop scenario. You know, it's a crime. So, uh, uh but it won, and it, it's because you had to watch, and if you watch those five episodes and you were judging writing, you had to admit that that was some amazing writing. Wow. Uh, if, you know, talking about the Emmys again, if you get nominated, is there an episode you, you're thinking of submitting or have you not maybe thought about that yet? No, it's not even a challenging question. Um, the ninth episode of the show... Uh, where uh, Jimmy, the character I play, uh, suddenly, finally, and uh, slowly yet still realizes that his brother has, uh, well, I don't want to have spoilers. Is this a problem here? Spoilers? I, I think anyway, people maybe, if they're watching the video, they've probably seen the whole season. That episode is one that has, I think, the most... Uh, it was a scene that took the most to do and the most uh, out of me. And, uh, and I'm very proud of the work that uh, I did. And I, I'm going to say that uh, one of the reasons I did well was because I was acting with Michael McKeon, who, uh, you know, people like Brian Cranston and Jonathan Banks and Michael McKeon and Aaron Paul, those are people I've had some pretty intense scenes with, and they they raise your game. Uh, so we're so you know whatever you appreciation you get for playing moments honestly or challenging moments, you can't help but think about the people you were in the scene with who were giving you all that emotion and all that truth, and uh, and how you you just used it. <laughs> uh, I mean, really, it's like having a trainer there. It's like, congratulations on doing 50 push-ups. And you're like, yeah, but did you see the guy yelling at me to do 50 <laughs> standing next to me? Uh, you know, that's what it's like. It's that person pulling you into the moment. So, um, You've been playing this character now since, I think, 2009 is when he first popped up. Um, so here we are six years later. Are you still enjoying discovering new things about Saul slash Jimmy? Uh, yeah, for sure. Uh, and I don't feel like I've been playing him for that long. I feel like I've been playing him for one year because mm -hmm. he's so different from the person you met in Breaking Bad. He's just, I mean, he, he's not a different person. It's just Saul Goodman told everybody Look, I'm, I'm a, I'm a persona. That's not my real name. And then you only saw him in his place of business, and you only saw him interacting basically with his public. You know. So now you're seeing this guy at home. You're seeing him with his family. You're seeing him in, in his sort of as a younger person, as an older guy. I mean, you're just seeing so many dimensions. It's not a different person. It's just so much more dimensional that it doesn't, it's not really the same thing. It doesn't feel like you could be tired of it because it's so different. And, uh, and then it doesn't feel like I could be tired of it because he's, he's a really rich character. I think it'll take a few years to get tired of him. I'm sure you get asked this a lot. Is Brian Cranston going to appear? Is Aaron Paul going to appear? You know, uh -huh. as a diehard fan of the show, which I am, I'm not sure I want them to appear. Oh, where do you stand on, on that? I, I, I have no problem with them being in the show. And I don't think it's a... 
I mean, you got to know because you've been watching it that Vince Gilligan and Peter Gould are not going to do that in some cheap, like, flashy yeah. way. If they do it, it's going to be really cool and meaningful. And then it won't feel quite so much like a cameo from somebody from Breaking Bad. It'll feel like a character in Better Call Saul. Um, of course, in the media, it'll be reported as this wonderful guest starring moment and, you know, but it's just, you know, they're going to write something uh, purposeful. And I think, it, I think it could happen. And I kind of think it should happen, especially with Jesse. I mean, my character, Je Jesse knew me, Jesse knew Saul. Uh, and so did Hank. So I really feel like, if we go a couple of years, we'll see. But if we go a couple of years, I think it should happen that that I that Saul should interact with Hank and with Jesse. Um, I, I loved Saul's breakdown in the finale in the bingo hall. That must have been just pages and pages of of dialogue, right? It was five and a half pages. Wow. <laughs> Did you memorize it or, or was it just, you know? I memorized it. Yeah, there's no cue cards. And especially when you, you saw that was done with a handheld camera. So it was, there would be no place to put cue cards. Um, and, I, and I do the script as written as much as I can to the, to the letter. So every hesitation in the script is, is coming from the script pages, not from me. Um, you know, look, it's an honor, it's a challenge to get that much work to do, and it's an honor to be trusted with that much work and that much uh, expo exposing of a person. Um, it was a tough day. It was tough. But, I'm, um, you know, people ask me, because I've, I've written and directed and, and produced and um, I've probably done the most writing. Do I like acting better? And the thing is, acting in a challenging scene is is really rewarding. That kind of scene, that that bingo hall scene, or the scene with my brother. You go home from that, and you're 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 emotionally drained, and you're physically drained, but you really went somewhere. It's like you went into a dream for a couple of hours and you experienced the world in a, in a different way through different eyes. And that's kind of a crazy gift and a, it's just a wonderful thing. Uh, it's a wonderful thing to experience. And so um, that kind of acting is, is the most fun of all. And then second to that would be writing comedy. Yeah. Well, it's second, but a second. <laughs> Do you have a, a And then regular acting would go down the down way further down on the list. Mm -hmm. Which is to say regular acting. Acting in a scene that doesn't have a lot of uh, doesn't challenge you much. Luckily they don't write many of those for me. <laughs> uh, but uh, you know Sometimes I watch, you know, old time detective shows or t cop shows uh, from the 70s or earlier. They're fun to watch, Dragnet. I look at like Dragnet as a great example of like, that would be horrible to me. I like watching it, mm -hmm. but you're basically a robot that stands there and spits out the facts and figures of the moment. And yeah, that would not be rewarding acting to me. Right. Um, hey, do you have a favorite scene or a favorite moment from season one of Better Call Saul? Um, I love the scene with me and Jonathan Banks in the in the booth. You know where I get in with him, and I won't let him go. <laughs> it was so funny. We cracked up every time they yelled "cut." So uh, that was fun as hell to do. I think uh, the first scene with my brother in the first episode where we're learning so much about those two 
and, and Michael's performance in that, and McKeon. Uh, the scene in the desert with Tuco, I mean, that shit, even though you got sand in your mouth and in your eyes and you're hot and it's fucking kind of physically brutal to be shooting for 12 hours out in that, there's something really like you're getting away with something doing that for a living and spending all day with a bunch of other adults doing that. Oh my God, the billboard scene, the same thing. You know, it's just, there's something, it's a little nerve wracking to feel like, shouldn't, should we be allowed to do this? <laughs> but boy, it's more, it makes you smile inside to think, I get to do this? Like, it's crazy, something's wrong. Something's gone wrong. <laughs> Well, I think something's definitely gone right with the show. I can't wait for season two. Uh, best of luck at the Emmys for you and Jonathan Banks, Michael McKee, and the whole cast, the whole crew. And is there anything that you can tease about season two, or or are we not that far in the production? I love yet? that you asked me that question because you know my uh, I have a PR person, and and they send you everything that mentions your name. So whether it's an interview that you did or an article that someone wrote about Better Call Saul and they put your name in it, it, you get it. And you don't, you know, you don't read them all because sometimes it's like, whatever, I got things to do and they're, all they're doing is referencing the show for something else, you know. But an article today, and I don't know what it's in, and I just got it, mentions the writers at some panel they did. I wasn't there. They talked about season too. So I'm going to go read that right now and find out what I can find out. Awesome. I'm going to Google it too as soon as we hang up. I don't know anything. <laughs> well, thanks a lot, Bob Odenkirk. Best of luck thanks. at the end. Thank you. Bye-bye.